It was the part of the show where he had to be the bugler, not knowing how to play the bugle. And that takes courage, I would think. All right, our next speaker has served as the executive director of Kentuckiana Works since August 2002. During his tenure, Kentuckiana Works has established a set of one-stop career centers on the campuses of the local community college, become the nation's first workforce investment board to run a college access center, and created a strong youth program serving high school dropouts. He has a BA from Duke University and a Juris Doctorate from Columbia University School of Law. Please welcome Michael Gritton. Thank you, Gene. I'm going to turn that mic off for me so I can, I can wander. All right, let me test first of all to see if can you all hear me. Can everybody hear me in the back? Okay. They gave me one of these lavalier mics because I'm too crazy to stand just behind a podium. And I have a couple of things that I'm going to be talking to you about in the next 45 minutes or so. The main thing is you see on the program, I'm going to be talking to you about career changes. Is it time for me to make a career change or not? But I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about my own personal experience, having been unemployed at one time in my life. And so we'll circle back to that. First, I want to make sure you know what Kentucky and Works is. We're essentially the workforce development agency for the seven counties around Jefferson County. Okay? We get federal money to be able to run one-stop career centers, which I'll tell you a little bit more about, but in a nutshell, can help anybody sort of do the basic resume, preparation, am I looking for jobs in all the right places, that sort of thing. We have a table out in that room that anytime today, if you want to go talk to somebody from those one-stop career centers, they're outside, okay? We get money to run programs for young people that have dropped out of high school. We get money to run uh, something called the Kentucky Anna College Access Center, which is also at that table which helps a lot of people who are interested in going back to school or who want a little bit more intensive career counseling help, right? And so we're very grateful to Congressman Yarmouth and the others in Congress who help fund those programs because they're important. And one of the reasons why I'm here to talk about career changes is because some of the money we get can help a person who's been laid off from a job go back to school, particularly if they're going back into a field that we think is, is going to grow, is either growing now or going to grow in the next couple of years. So that's why I'm sort of, if not an expert, at least I know something about career changes, okay? Um, but before I get into that, I want to talk just a little bit about what just happened in this economy in the last couple of years. Because uh, I think all of you know it, and we know it, but this was the biggest economic downturn that our country has seen since the Great Depression. And I read the Wall Street Journal every day to try to keep up with what business thinks about this kind of stuff. And I absolutely froze in my tracks the morning in the fall of 2008 where the Wall Street Journal on the front page was talking about the potential of another uh, episode that would look like the Great Depression, right? I thought we had figured this stuff out and there was no possibility that anything like that could happen, right? And Luckily for us, we have great people in Congress, like Congressman John Yarmouth. We have great leadership in people like President Obama. We have amazing heroes that people don't appreciate, like Ben Bernanke at the Federal Reserve. And through the leadership of those people and lots of others, lots of stuff got done in the fall of 08 into the spring of 09, including the TARP and the ARA and things like that, that lots of people now like to grandstand and complain about. But if we had not done them, we could potentially have a room 10 times this size with people that are trying to find jobs, right? Because that's how bad it could have been, right? So thankfully, we're not in that kind of a situation. But if you only hear one thing that I say in the next few minutes, I just want you to understand this. When these kinds of economic cataclysms happen, a lot of good people lose their job through no fault of themselves, okay? Lots of good people lose jobs when the game of musical chairs happens and all of a sudden things freeze up and there aren't enough chairs for everybody. And it doesn't have to do with your skills, it doesn't have to do with your talents, it just has to do with the contraction was so sharp that sometimes they just don't have enough demand to justify keeping people there. How do I know this? Why would I know this? Because it happened to me in 1992. So like Mr. Costangin, I'm the second person you're going to hear from today who went to Columbia Law School, right? Louisville kid from PRP, got to go to a great college, great law school. I was working in New York City, right? I basically could look out my office from the 54th floor above the Grand Central Station like this every day, and I literally thought I was a master of the universe. I owned the world. I was making more money than my parents had ever made in their whole life, right? I would go to cocktail parties. Oh, I'm a lawyer at a law firm. Oh, that's great, right? I had a tremendous office. I worked on, you know, relatively interesting stuff, and it was great. And then all of a sudden, 
a cataclysm in the economy, not as big as the one we just went through, but one that was a big bump. The, the recession of 90, 91 starts to happen. I was too dumb back then to be reading the Wall Street Journal. I should have, but if I had been reading it, what I realized is business started to slow down. In this sense of musical chairs, things are moving, things are moving, things are moving in the economy, and all of a sudden, if there's sort of a moment of panic or fear, all of a sudden, people, right? Everybody's got to get one. And so somehow or another, when, when that stuff started to slow down, businesses needed fewer professional services. What kind of professional services do they play for? They need accountants. They needed fewer accountants. They print things. They needed fewer printers. And what did I know? They needed fewer lawyers, right? So I get the call on a Friday in late January, right, from the HR director at 5 o'clock. I still get cold chills thinking about it. I don't, even, I don't even like to talk about it now, right? I don't like to think about it. But you get the call. You know it's bad if it's Friday at 5 o'clock. Your services are no longer needed, right? So this was not particularly in my remarks, but what I realized out in the hallway is I've met a half a dozen people in this room that I know personally, who I know are talented, who have degrees, who have experience, who are bright people that I would be happy to have on my team if I had openings. So one thing I just want to make sure you understand is sometimes this isn't about you and you can't take it personally, right? I still get butterflies in my stomach thinking about that happening to me years ago. Then I remember that I, I had moved to a new city, I moved to Boston. I was trying to look for jobs, and I remember, this was before the internet, right? This was 93, but I remember sending out my resume, and I'm thinking, this is a good resume, right? So anybody that gets this resume would want to hire me, and then you would wait and wait. I remember getting a weather-beaten postcard that looked like the postman had stepped on before it came to me to just say, we've received your resume. If we're interested, we'll let you know, right? And so I know in my bones that a lot of you are going through something like that right now. And so I just want to be clear that most of the rest of today's program is organized to try to help you make the very best job search that you can. Because part of this has to do with the economy improving. And that's why what Congressman Yarma said at the beginning is so important. Ultimately, we just need the economy to improve. We need companies to start growing again so that they need good people, so that a lot of the good people in this room can apply the skills and talents that you already have to those companies. Right? And so if you go through today and you think to yourself, I don't need to make a career change, I'm on the right track, all that kind of stuff, the rest of the day is organized for you around that. Okay? But the reason I want to talk to you about career changes is sometimes that moment is a moment for you to think about, is this really what I want to do? Right? And it's also a moment to ask, is this something that I'm actually really good at? And it's also a moment to ask, is this something that I have passion for? because you heard Bill talk about passion before, right? And it turns out that all three of those things are sort of interconnected in your thinking process about what am I gonna do and, and, uh, and how's this gonna work? Now, just think for another minute. In America, when you get knocked down, what are you taught to do? Get back up, right? If you fall off that horse, get back on, right? That's what we're taught. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Our culture is very much about getting up and trying again. And again, at the end of the day, you all may decide, that's all I need to do. I got knocked down, and I'm going to get back and do something else. But you see me up here today talking to you not as a lawyer who got laid off as a lawyer and went back to being a lawyer, but as a person who decided I wanted to go off and do something else. Because part of the conversation I had with myself back in 93 is, I didn't really like that stuff that much. I liked the money, but I didn't like much else about it, right? And it turns out that I probably wasn't as good at it as some people also, right? So when you think about these kinds of conversations, what I'm going to do is throughout the rest of my presentation, I'm going to show you some snippets of conversations from people that Kentuckiana Works has worked with either to help go back to school or to, to go back into a different kind of field.